Hey guys, so today I finally wanted to make this video talking about the naming convention change. So the naming convention change, I posted a blog about this probably like a week or two ago, just announcing this change on my channel and sort of why I was doing it. So if I talked about all of those details in this video, it would be like 45 minutes long, which is a part of why I wrote the blog post. So I'll link the blog post down below, but I'll also summarize sort of why I'm going to change the naming convention of the body types that I use. So the main reason why is because I really want to separate the idea of personality from the lines of the body. So this is sort of the, the crux of the whole thing, is that I often find for example, if someone is a romantic, they don't identify with the romantic style. Or if someone is a natural, they don't identify with the natural style. And so I want to, you know, someone who's natural could feel like they're more elegant and someone and they might want to be a classic because classics are supposed to be elegant and all of these personality traits that we associate with the body types that I don't think have just anything to do with the lines of the body. So that's the main thing is that I want to really focus in on the lines of the body and not the personality and get rid of all of these, um, all of this baggage basically that comes with the style that each body type should have. And the next thing is closely related again, it's it's the personality thing which I kind of touched on. It's this idea that the the personality of someone is somehow related to their body type and I don't know how we have been able to basically carry on for this long in body typing um, saying that someone's personality is dependent on their body type or their body type is dependent on their personality and I think it's because of all of this confounding stuff about essence which is kind of related to personality and um, just the the body type and then also there is a lot of sometimes even spirituality sort of mixed into body typing and sort of saying that you know someone's you know the idea that someone's personality and their um, energy is somehow is expressed through their actual body and it's, it's just all very confounded and I don't actually have anything particularly against using spirituality and the, the, the idea of um, you know the spiritual aspect sort of manifests into the physical aspect like I don't have any anything against that that's simply just not what I do here I have always sort of separated and that's that's my goal here is to separate spirituality mystical things personality from what should just be the lines of your body so that's basically why I am doing this naming convention change. I think it also prevents people from finding their body type because again they won't identify with romantic style or the Marilyn Monroe type of style or they won't identify with elegant style like for a classic for example. So I just want to do away with that and focus on the lines of the body. So in terms of what will actually be changing on the channel, it's basically nothing. Nothing will be changing. This is actually something that I started from day one and I wasn't even aware that I was doing it, believe it or not. So even in my soft gamine video, which is one of my first videos on this channel, I was saying that soft gamines are, um, they, they don't have to be fun or cute, they can be um, sexy or they can be edgy or whatever it is that I was saying in that video, you can watch it, I'll link it down below. But this is a philosophy that I had in the interpretation that I had of the body types basically from day one. So it's not something that's new, except I didn't really realize how important that distinction was between my method and between so many other methods. So this is sort of the story of my life with this channel. You guys are seeing me, you know, seeing my approach evolve and sort of crystallize. And something similar actually happened with my color analysis system. So. Um, with my color analysis system, I used to use the seasonal names and that was a total mess because there was a lot of miscommunication and a lot of time spent explaining stuff and finally I did away with the seasonal names and of course I named it Artistic License and now we have the names that we have, Cool and Delicate, Cool and Radiant, whatever, etc. So it was through that communication of my approach and my system that my 
approach to color analysis really evolved and became what it is today. And in the same way, it's taking me, taken me a little bit longer um, to realize because all of this information online, there's so many different people with different approaches and different ways that they do things and essence and, and things like that, that it's taken me a while to really crystallize sort of what the differences are between my approach and other people's approaches. So basically that's, that's sort of uh, uh, what happened and uh, the point is nothing will be changing because my approach has always been the same. It's just that I'm finally coming to realize how different it is after putting it out there basically. And another intention of, oh well first, I, and I also want to talk about the other main differences. So the the second sort of kind of main difference is the height thing. I We get a lot of stuff on here about height. I always hear about height and body type. I don't think that height has any factor in your body type. Only how tall you look has a factor in your body type, but that's different from your height. And it's also not the main factor at all. It's one of 15 factors. So that is another sort of main difference between how I view things and how other people might view things about body typing. So I've typed Lily Cole as a soft gamine, and I believe she is 5'10", and she also has a long vertical line. And I ha have a whole video on her which was quite a while back um, yeah so I'll link that below as well so yeah so the height thing has always been a thing I always get comments I always get questions about the height thing I just recently got a question you know I'm 411 but all of my answers are C's can I still be a classic or am I something else so as far as I'm concerned if you're 411 but all of your answers are C you can be a classic and uh, again, this is something that I'm saying. This is not something, I don't know what David Kibbe would say about that. I don't know what anyone else would say about that. To me, I've seen that height is not really a determining factor. And I'm also in a weird situation where I have my own approach that is closely tied to a lot of other people's approaches, right? So um, it leaves me in a position where it's like, I'm either seen as misrepresenting David Kibbe's approach or misquoting him or misrepresenting his ideas. I don't think I've ever misquoted him, but things like that. And uh, versus, you know, some other people will say that I am ripping off his approach. So all of this stuff is just, it's a very weird situation. And I was inspired by his approach. I think his approach is really, really good. I like the body types that he described and the fundamentals, but I really separate, you know, personality from body type and from the lines. And that's what I aim to do here. Regardless, no matter what, everyone who reads a book is going to add their own interpretation, even if their interpretation is a good faith effort to understand sort of what the person is, is saying in the book. That is always going to happen. And it was, you know, something that I really aimed to understand, but I still understood it through my own lens. And that has led to really understanding that I have my own approach. So that is sort of uh, the difference. It is an interpretation. At the same time, it's also different enough that I now feel like I should call it my own approach. At the same time, it's also quite similar. So it's also quite similar and it is a weird thing where it's like, where do you start calling it your own approach versus you're just using someone else's work or someone else's approach? So the thing is, is that body types have actually, you guys might not know this, if, you, if you're just here for some style advice or something, you guys might not know this, but body types have been around for a while. So it was actually in the 1960s that someone named Northrop wrote a book about the yin and the yang of both body types and of the lines. So this was in the 60s. And uh, she also categorized all of these different aspects. For example, um, having long lines and having stiff fabrics and things like that with yang. And she characterized the soft things that we now know as romantic to be yin. So this is something that has been around for quite some time. And and then there was also someone else who came along in the 70s who first made up the categories that we now know as gamine, natural, romantic, etc. So I, 
there's a lot of stuff online you know I'm, I'm sort of that name dropping people so you guys can research on your own i don't know that much about the history of this actually so if i'm saying something that's wrong please be kind and correct me in the comments i'll pin your comment you know so um just let me know if there's something that's not correct about this but the point is that the idea of yin and yang has been around for a really long time currently i saw also that Angelic, the category of Angelic is a McJimsey category that she came up with in the early 70s. So that's my understanding. And then later, John Kitchener further sort of crystallized these ideas and formalized them and he came up with seven essences so they are the five main body types that David Kibbe uses and then two more which are angelic and ingenue and then I don't really know the timeline between John Kitchener and David Kibbe I only did some quick research about this but the idea is that Kibbe has been said to have said that he doesn't believe in ingenue and he also doesn't have angelic so um, or he thinks that ingenue, there's no place for, like, it's, ingenue is not really something that an adult woman should strive for, um, because it's a cute look. I have my own ideas on ingenue, and I'll link some videos down below on that. I don't think that it's a set of lines, I think it's a set of features, and I think angelic is an archetype. So I have pretty different opinions on both ingenue and angelic. They might seem like they're similar, but they're actually very different as far as I'm concerned so yeah so I have sort of my own opinions on that but the five main body types that we are used to I would say are the lines of the body they're not personality they're not essence they are not certain features and feature spacing like ingenue is um yeah so so anyway so the point is there is a long history of all kinds of people who are doing body typing who have been doing this idea of yin and yang and i'm saying all of this in part because i want to give credit where credit is due so this all of the legwork for this stuff has really been done by northrop northrop in the 60s was the one who actually came up with these yin and yang descriptors and so that is sort of who we should all be you know, ultimately crediting for the initial ideas that led to all of these awesome body typing systems. So then people built on them and built on them. David Kibbe built on that. Well, McJimsey built on that. And then John Kitchener and David Kibbe built on that. So yeah, it's all pretty interesting. And there's a long history and a part of that's also a part of why i want to rename them for the uses that i'm using them for because there's also been a long history of tying them to personality and that's just something that i feel like we've had go on and create confusion for a little bit too long i want to get rid of the whole personality thing as it relates to body type but don't be confused this doesn't mean that it gets rid of personality as it relates to how you should express yourself through your style it only relates to the lines of the body so i guess this naming convention change is sort of my attempt my further attempt to um, crystallize the ideas into what matters and what doesn't and to sort of further formalize them and make them easier to use make them something that is finally not related to personality and yeah so that's sort of the goal of all of this so finally let's talk about some of the names that i've been thinking on so i have notes here so i'm going to separate not me you know not me northrop mcjimsey david kibbe everybody john kitchener has separated the body types into these five main types so um more or less so i'm going to rename dramatic as sharp i'm going to rename romantic as curved and classic as blended and gamine as mixed i'm also going to rename yang and yin i'm going to say yang is structured and yin is soft so i really want to get rid of these ideas of personality as it relates to the lines of the body so all of these descriptors that i just listed sharp curved blended mixed are basically just the bones and the bone structure of the body types and i think that's what we really really need to come back to and finally i didn't forget about natural so natural i'm in between 
So blunt, blunt is, is the descriptor for natural bones. Blunt, I feel like is, I don't know. I don't know if people are going to like that name. The whole point is to make neutral names, but if everyone's gonna hate that name, then I guess that kind of defeats the purpose, but maybe it's the best I can do. Another idea is beveled. I think beveled is actually correct. Um, and blunt is also correct, but beveled might be more neutral, but I'm afraid that no one knows the word beveled. Like my mom didn't know the word beveled. Um, so I'm not really sure. So let me know what you guys think of that in between blunt and beveled. Some other ideas were to call them like with an ED at the end, like sharpened, curved, blended, mixed, and blunted. And that blunted might kind of be better than blunt. But yeah, so I'm still undecided about natural and what to call them. So I'm hoping to in the next few weeks or so come up with a video you know an official video that i could reference people to on the five main body types and the five main body type descriptions that i'm going to use with the new names and to give examples of people and sort of show you guys what i believe matters for the five main types and also their subtypes i'm not getting rid of the subtypes but i do want to bring the attention back to the bone structure because we would never have a soft dramatic versus theatrical romantic question if we were really focused on the bone structure so that's sort of where i'm coming from is to really try to make the um the body typing system more accessible and also more palatable for everyone because I feel like this is such an amazing system. It's something that that's going to be useful for really anyone who's trying to look good. It doesn't mean you have to follow it to a T, but just to know the lines of your body is just so helpful when you're shopping. It's so helpful to help you understand just why certain things look the way that they do on you and why certain things flatter you and certain things don't. So hopefully, simplifying the system and going back down to the basics of how to actually find the best lines of your body which is all about the facial bone structure and the skeleton and then the flesh later uh, and the flesh and the facial features later so going back to that and reminding people of that by really describing the bone structures and then also getting rid of the personality aspect i think is really going to help with understanding and also sort of if anybody was off put by the idea of yin and yang or by the idea of um you know certain personalities attached to the body types hopefully we'll do away with that and we'll actually get down to what matters which is you know what are the lines that flatter you? They're not yin or yang. They're not romantic or dramatic. They're just lines. And what are those lines that flatter you? And what do you want to express with those lines? I am going to keep the all of the 13 types. I'm not going to add more types as of right now. And uh, I'm not going to take away more types, but I'm just going to bring the attention back to the bone structures, which is what determines the main types, the, the main sort of parent types, so to speak. So yeah, so there's nothing to really be concerned about in terms of any big changes coming up, but yeah, I think this is really going to help make the system easier to understand. So I think I will stop rambling now. Look out for that video of the five main body type profiles that I'll make for, for people's references and things like that. Leave some comments down below. Read the blog post if you haven't read it already. I did put some more things in there as well um, that I didn't cover here potentially. So just read that if you're curious and let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will talk to you next time.